Today we're doing the fourth Sunday of Advent, which is joy. It seems to me that joy is one of those words that often gets um, contrasted with happiness. And happiness is typically stated to be something that comes as a result of some other event. Joy, on the other hand, joy is an internal thing. It comes from within your being. It more or less is a ongoing state of being. And when it really becomes permanent, it, 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 it feels as though it's just your natural way of joy doing is life. more like, what is that background noise in your life? What is, the, what is the song of your life? And when we tune into joy, what we're actually doing is it's coming because we have tuned into our soul, into our spirit, into the Christ presence that is us. And in do, to do that, I think there are several things that we need to keep in mind. One is that we're looking for what is of long-term value. Really, I think it's not that far off from um, deferred gratification. Rather than doing what seems like it might be fun right now, we think long-term. We think what will make Another life Another way better. of saying that is to do things that satisfy your soul and not do things that satisfy the ego only or the body's impulses. Do the things that really matter to you. If you do the things that really matter to you, you're building your future. Your future becomes more capable, more um, inviting to you and invites success in a broader, consistent way. To do that, you need to essentially become the designer of your life. You need to figure out what it is that your soul and your heart really care for. Now, these things could be something uh, along the lines of what many other people have said. The, you want a successful career. You want to make a contribution to the world. You want an amazing relationship. You want a, to be a good father, mother, or a good spouse you want to somehow awaken to your true nature. You can figure out whatever it is, but you need to name those so that you'll know if you're on track with each one of them. And if you're not on track with each one of them, it would be good to notice what is keeping you from that. Typically, in many cases, to really know what we want, sometimes we really just have to take away that which we don't want. So we know what we want by what we don't want any more of or we want but less of. But if you can figure out what's keeping you from knowing what you really want or doing what you really want, then the first thing you need to do is start to eliminate those. As you eliminate those, it frees up time for you to become that person that you want to be, the one that you came here to be. It's uh, perhaps a bit presumptive to think, we came to, into this life to, to be something, to accomplish something, to unfold some aspect of our infinite potential in this lifetime. But if we do take that assumption, then it's important that we actually do what it is that we are called here to be, what we are built to be, what we are chosen to be, however you describe it. What is your destiny? What was your destiny before you got here? And how can you get on with it? So first, let's eliminate that which keeps us from having the time and the energy and the attention to do what is ours to do by eliminating that which is not helping. But it is our job to figure out what to eliminate. And then to focus on those things, whatever the number is, but let's say those five things that you're really here to do, that you really want to do well and feed those with your time, attention, and effort so that you bring your life in alignment with your soul, with your higher purpose, that you move toward your, your, um, your destiny of who you came here to be. So it isn't always just be Johnny, be good. Sometimes it is to write your own song, to be an artist, to be a, an adventurer, to be a poet or a creator of real estate empires, who knows what it is, but it also probably involves being some type of person in relationship to other people and to the ongoing process of life. 
somehow making your contribution to life. I bet it involves all of that. So when you, though, when you get on your game, when you're doing your game, this is when joy erupts naturally. It's not just because you begin to succeed more, which you probably will, though it may not come right away. It is because you're now doing what is yours to do. That's what really gives you that sense of joy. Maybe a piece of that is something we could add to our list of things we need to do. Have some fun to be joyous. You can imagine that the power of feeling your own soul being fed by what you're doing should bring enough energy into the body and the mind that it lifts it above its average, that it makes it excited to be alive, not just simply getting through. But one of the things that can happen in this time period is we can look deeply, more clearly at ourselves. We can stop living on the surface and dwell in the depths of our being. And if anything that the heart wants, I think it wants you to do that as well. To feel, to know itself. The beginning of wisdom is knowing yourself. The beginning of a purposeful, great life is to know yourself well enough to be able to chart your course and the last thing you really need is to be able to have the gumption to go for it. And then with some luck, and Grant, I do think there is luck involved, with some luck, you will find that feeling of joy. May this year of 2020 not have been wasted on us. And may 2021 be one of the best years of our lives as we take the steps to live our passion our innate needs and our heart's desire. I have confidence in each of us. We have what it takes to do it. May you go into the, this Christmas season knowing that Christ in you is born again.